and his PhD from uh, MIT. Uh, Professor Lin's uh, research interests are focused on self-localized topological soliton theory of conducting polymers for various uh, organic and optoelectromechanical uh, devices and applications. Uh, he's also interested in glass transition theory for supercooled liquids uh, and amorphous solids. Uh, he's also interested in heterogeneous catalytic reactions and poisoning processes for various energy applications like fuel cells, um, uh, sensors, and so on. Um, uh, Professor Lin is active in developing new computational algorithms and methodologies to attack uh, very long-standing unresolved scientific problems. And his research has been funded by DOE, by NSF, uh, by Honda, and by Nenter uh, and company. Uh, he also has um, uh, an active uh, user proposal that uh, he employs to do computational work uh, using the NSF TeraGrid uh, supercomputing centers. Thank you so much. Um, thank you all for coming. Um, so um, today, um, I would like to briefly uh, walk you over through what I've been doing in the, in the last five and a half years in IBU. So I start from acknowledgement. So I just talk here all the work I've done by my students. So, um, so Yong Wu, um, uh, Andre, um, they are working on those chemical polymer um, hamiltonians and also photovoltaic cell mm -hmm. applications. Pin Du has been collaborating with uh, Xin Zhang, uh, working on those artificial muscles and um, and metal composite materials. Um, um, Timothy Lee, um, who was um, the student of the uh, Raman Ben Cell in, in physics and later on become my um, postdoc also um, in our group. Uh, he also he's one of the uh, pioneers working on those uh, new Hamiltonians we're talking about today. And Peng Hui, he's also here. Um, uh, actually, uh, he's also a student uh, at Grab with uh, Professor Park, Hello Park, um, and working on um, uh, material glass. And Heng Luo has been working on solid side fuel cells, also the L Joe's um, uh, applications. And, um, and also, Jia Kai, uh, he's about to graduate. Uh, he, he will deploy the plan uh, in, a, in a couple of days from now. And, um, working on those photovoltaic solar cell applications as well. I've been collaborating with your um, uh, Gopalan, Bashu, Pao, and Ludwig in physics, working on those solid acid applications for energy. Um, and also, Xin Zhang working on artificial muscles. And um, Duan and, and Xin Zhang also are grabbing uh, the node channel applications. And Professor Park also, again, uh, on the material glass applications. So these are people. Uh, and also, a lot of people are also you think, think for in, in, uh, Anyway, but, but these are uh, but, um, uh, these people will give you the uh, talk I'm going to give today um, in the following uh, 45 minutes. And, um, and these are the funding agents we um, have been supporting uh, our work in, in, in the group. So, um, materials, materials have many properties um, electric, uh, optical, magnetic, uh, mechanical properties. And many of these uh, properties are controlled by defects. So, I just follow. A, a simple toy from my, my son, and um, it's called 15 puzzle uh, toy. So um, look at this, this toy. If you think about this, it's four by four, and on uh, that small small cube here inside, and you can go, uh, you can you can really, uh, flip up and down and left to right. If you think about all the all the all the um, the um, the site got occupied, perfect system, nothing going to move, but become kind of boring. So the reason why the, the material have many so many inflammatory defects. Uh, for many properties, they all come from those uh, small defects. Therefore, um, other things can move in and move out. Therefore, can transport and make all the uh, ever-changing world uh, we are talking about today. So these defects are really the controlling processes, um, which determine fundamentally determine the material properties of the um, the property of, of many many uh, important material properties. And um, and and in particular, we are I'm, I'm very interested in one kind of very special kind of uh, defects called the um, cell localized flow defects. One very good example is uh, when you shear a perfect crystal, um, how does crystal really uh, respond to the, the shear deformation? Just like this carpet. So for example, you want to shear the carpet, like try to remove it, the carpet uh, against the wall, uh, the floor, it's very hard to move away. But if you do that, on, uh, if they keep pushing that way, uh, it's much easier to generate a kink locally at one side and push the kink through. That's exactly the idea of the dislocation. And this dislocation, dislocation are the so-called plasticity carriers of this um, this strength deformation <coughs> it can self localize by itself and also can propagate and give the uh, property, determine all the properties, many mechanical properties of the crystalline materials. Then the question is if the, the system is not, is not crystal, um, there's some defects, a lot of defects, amorphous systems, and super cool liquids, then what are those uh, corresponding 
pesky, uh, pesky carriers is one of the focus topic we are going, uh, I'm, going to, uh, I'm going to deliver today. The second topic is also about localization by localized in terms of wave function in the ele electronic digital, digital freedom. And this one can give the charge carriers. It's done also through the, uh, the electrophonal couplings. So electronic to couple the phonons. Therefore, it can localize itself and also um, try to do the um, deliver charges. And, and if this electronic band structures happen to have the same band gap as a visible, uh, visible light region, you can couple to the uh, visible light to do those photo, uh, photovoltaic solar cell applications. And then again, you can see that this kind of um, optical, electro, and mechanical product can all come together. Therefore, can enable us to do those multifunctional material designs. So I start from something um, brief introduction, um, introduction about what, what are those uh, topological, uh, topological defects. So as I give away an example about the topological uh, solitons, for example, it starts from something called, um, in, you have two, uh, at least a few states which are energ energetically degenerate. And a very good example can, can be done by something called a sine coordinate equation. So right equation is basically equation similar to something called a gliding coordinate equation. Um, when people try to um, rewrite the shading equation um, in terms of relativity form to do the Dirac equations, the intermediate state, state is trying to do the gliding coordinate equation. Here it should be phi here, but if you replace phi by psi phi, so uh, you, will, you, will, you will call a sine coordinate equation. The kind of equations you have part of the energy as the z-axis. And x is the um, this x is the um, the phi the wave function direction and x direction the other way. Then we know the kind of functions. If you limit the, the initial point to the final point to be the same the same order uh, of the wave function, same kind of, of top, topology, then um, this x to infinity to x minus infinity is same uh, have the same phi. Then this is a trivial one. Uh, nothing really interesting going to happen. But if somehow we can ref uh, we can enforce the transition. Uh, crossover from uh, from start from neg negative infinity to be um, to be zero, for example, and going to negative uh, two pi or positive pi, then if you can consider this way, you'll form a topological uh, uh, defect. And this kind of defect can exist uh, and rest also in in, mo in motion. And and one one classical example of that is that, uh, is a Mobius strip. Like um, the whole thing can really um, form a loop, and then without any any obvious defect, but it can probably. Uh, if form in capital phonons, you will uh, propagate the speed of sound. Or uh, uh, maybe a, a little bit of you about that, supersonically. And, um, and also, on the other hand, there are very um, hot topic in the past five years in physics talking about something called topological integrators. Basically, you read a 3D object. Uh, the surface is a topological integrator. Inside is a face different from the, um, the trivial face of the vacuum. Therefore, topological integrator the, um, will be mechanical. Um, Mechanical conductors along along the whole surface, and then um, and then, then also a lot of things doesn't uh, will not be scattered. The conductivity will not, will not, will not be easily um, scattered by those uh, defects and phonons because they are constrained by the topological uh, um, external constraints we uh, we impose to the system. They become very, very stable, and, and and these are examples about what those uh, topological defects are in uh, in in a lot of um, so. Uh, there are many different kinds, but this is a good example about how, how they may look like and what we're talking about here. And this also um, introduces you, um, so basically the whole shape is exactly our group, uh, uh, our group uh, logo which is created by uh, Yong Wu uh, here, Yong Wu Xin here. Uh, it's the uh, material theory group, and then you see um, this same face, same file, or maybe different um, <laughs> different file. Um, so tell you that the, uh, this is exactly the thing we're focusing on in the past uh, six years uh, in every year. And um, why not? Why those <coughs> um, uh, defects are important? Because um, um, it's, my, uh, it's a key to um, it's a key to solve to attack at least two very important kind of the, uh, the, the um, unresolved problems in condensed matter theory. The first kind, of, talking about those many body problems, uh, generally many problems of, of electron correlations. Um, in 1999, um, Nobel no Prize in chemistry was awarded uh, to, to, the, to the people who developed the, the uh, base differential theory. And and then we finally work about um, for for nearly ninety percent of material system very well, but happen to be for something uh, for some ten the last ten percent it doesn't work well and people call all these systems as a strongly correlated systems, and connect problem is one of them, and this kind of conjugate systems which also got the Nobel Prize in um, ninety six for the vacuum ball applications connect polymer for uh, uh, year two thousand and two thousand ten for graphene, so um, and, and on the other hand. Um, uh, there's another uh, classic pro uh, problem talking about the um, the glass transition theory, um, and this glass transition should be in uh, view in uh, in in the contrast to the uh, conventional phase transition theory. 
uh, mean that uh, phase transition theory in a world defined um, other parameters uh, come from a, a, a morph of liquid to the, um, to the other uh, perfect crystals. But now you talk about the amorphous systems, there are so many exponentially large amount of metastable states. So how to define those other parameters is, uh, is, is unclear. And, lo and, and those classes might not be skin outside talking about here on, on flow indoor applications. It can be the biology molecule talking about lifetimes of aging processes and those things are very, very important for even for like biological applications. They all come from those uh, metastable states. Uh, uh, and then uh, we're going to show in, 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 the, in the next 40 minutes talking about the how this topology effect can play its roles to those processes, and then how we take the problem in a way um, we believe to be, uh, to be relevant. And this style of summarizes why the kind of thing can be so interesting. On the, on the left hand side uh, is the, the kinetic polymer system. Within the 5 to 10 of doping level of the ultimate uh, salt to the system, it can increase the conductivity by log scale by 10 order magnitude here, if within very short, uh, very small window, about 5%. On the right hand side is the temperature, uh, 1 over temperature uh, versus the viscosity, also in log scales. When temperature approaches the gasoline temperature, within about 10 Celsius, 10 Kelvin uh, range, the, uh, the viscosity can increase about 17 order magnitude. 17 order magnitude. So, we want to know what actually determines the construct conditions and then, and then the origin of that, and then how we can use the composite to, to control the material properties and um, do the design for us. Then we'll, we'll start from the first example about the uh, loss electron self localization problem. So, um, you look at any wire here, like in the room, um, well, the wires normally are insulated inside, they are metal, and then um, uh, plastic materials outside, they are insulators. Um, of course, we're talking about something called a plastic metal. So, it's plastic, it's really a polymer, but uh, it, can, it, can, it can conduct like, electric current. And uh, today, um, well, the kinetic polymer can be, uh, the connectivity of kinetic polymer can, can really be uh, control, well controlled. In the, uh, in under the experimental condition, from uh, from as extreme as diamond to as as high uh, as conductive as the uh, copper at room temperature, we can bridge the um, essentially every single thing people know about about the uh, conductivity spectrum. And there's a number of very, uh, very many applications, um, electric, optical, uh, mechanical, and magnetic applications. And today I'm going to focus mainly on the photovoltaic solar cells, also artificial muscles. And the um, topological silicons are really trying to carry out the materials. And sometimes people also refer to polarons, which are nothing more than proton and isotonal pairs. That's why we use soliton and they uh, treat the polarons as the, uh, of the pair of that. And, um, and for the photovoltaic solar cells, um, it's also interesting to look at that how nature works. Nature actually takes, uh, say, green leaves, uh, take the um, carbon dioxide, water, and use the photons to regenerate the oxygen, also hydrocarbons. Therefore, can they build life also can, can, um, can give oxygen out. Therefore, it can complete the whole uh, carbon cycle. And the reason why uh, green leaves can do that because there's some chlorophyll in, in the system. There are conjugate systems also. There are some accessory pigments. Uh, uh, many of those, they all conjugate, share the conjugate structures. These structures are very similar to the structure people use to build those organic photovoltaic solar cells. Not only so, um, even for human beings, for example, the reason we can see me now, the reason we can see the, um, the, the slides, because um, uh, not only we need the most deformable uh, lens uh, uh, from the uh, Tom Barbados group, we also need the, uh, the, the retining on the back which can detect those photons. Um, um, and, and those projects can be so complicated and but it really requires a, a very important step of how, how the how the uh, those C structure can absorb the uh, visible light and become the trans structure that can be the whole of uh, uh, physiological cycle and therefore give us the signal about the vision. But in terms of the organic solar cell design, um, we have some active material in the middle. We have the light coming in. You will totally excite the, um, the, the electron uh, to form the electron hole pairs called excitons. This exciton needs to dissociate and give it the, the positive charge and negative charge, and then uh, this kind of positive negative charge can, can, can go out through the potential that can drive the, um, the uh, can, can be used for the um, electric applications. And, and this is basically the idea about the photovoltaic solar cell. The optic process of that is you, you can insert the, the charge from the electrodes, and then the charge, positive charge and negative charge are going to meet each other in the materials and give you light out. So the reverse process of the um, uh, solar cells. And this gives you the uh, organic uh, LEDs, and also, maybe at the end, this will be the, uh, something we have be, uh, been talking about all the time, uh, about the iWatch stuff. Because um, those silicon uh, devices 
it cannot bend very well. A polymer can bend, and then you talk about deformable uh, LEDs. And to design the photovoltaic solar cells, one key property is the, to design the, something called a power conversion efficiency. Because power, so power is a product of the of, of voltage and, and current. So, um, so whatever uh, open uh, open circuit current, uh, voltage is very high, but current is zero, so power is very low. The opposite also the um, very uh, the short current is very high, but voltage is zero, so nothing will happen there. So there's some, some optimal regime talking about something called a few factors really give the maximum peak of the um, of the um, of the power, and um, this one called the, um, and then you divide by the, the total uh, energy come from the photons, they give you the, uh, the power condition. And this is the key point that we need to design. And our source, of course, is the solar, and uh, is the, uh, the sun uh, we have um, in our solar system. And, um, and we are so lucky to have the, um, the sun over there, so far away from us, which doing those uh, heavy duty um, nuclear fusion reactions. Fusion reactions, therefore, we don't need to worry about those, uh, waste, nuclear waste so far away from us. But anyway, uh, if you look at the, the surface of the, uh, of the solar, so um, the sun is about of, of 5,000 uh, 5, uh, degrees, and then the whole spectrum really match very well with the black body spectrum, so as indicated by this uh, black line. And these blue, blue regions are really the, um, the absorption spectrum uh, above the atmosphere, mm -hmm. and the red ones are, the, um, are those after those absorption of those greenhouse gases. Um, absorption uh, at, the, at the sea level after after the sunlight or uh, went through the whole uh, thickness of the uh, of the atmosphere. So uh, green leaves focus on this visible region as well as our eyes. But at the same time, you can see the tail here also very big, very long. Although they are not a peak of the solar energy, but the infrared region, there's a long a lot of energy can be can be can be taken. So uh, in principle, people are looking for those things called tendon cells. Yeah, but big bang gap on the top, and then and then and then. And then and a small bank gap, one by one going down, therefore you can absorb not only one single spectrum, you can also observe, observe every single part and then integrate everything out, therefore get a full account of energies. And therefore to design those bank gaps can be very, very challenging and also interesting promising applications. And look at real materials, it's very complicated. Um, there are some crystal regime talking about those bucky balls, the letters. Um, and here are the um, kinetic polymer uh, phase, pure kinetic phase, also in, in the junction of the uh, interface of, of, of many materials. They are also in, not in a perfect crystalline, uh, crystalline form. So how to model them can become very challenging. So, um, so there are many, many different ways. Because we are doing the electronic structure calculations, uh, there, are, there are a few different, ways, different choices uh, available in um, literatures. You can do semi equivalent ones. The, uh, the accuracy may not be good, but it costs a, lot, a very uh, small, relative small amount of cost. You go to the uh, test dimensional theory, um, how she or maybe even beyond that, it becomes become more costly, but it becomes more and more accurate. So ideally, I would like to develop a method which can be uh, can be in this region, it can be highly accurate and with low cost. Although it may not be do, like it may not take there, but this is our goal. Let me see. Uh, today we're going to tell you that we are about there already. Uh, we are kind of there already. Um, therefore, we can do a lot of quite <coughs> important applications. And the reason why, um, another reason why, not only because of the DFE method, which got applied in, 19, uh, in 1998, but this um, but this theory doesn't work uh, at all in terms of kinetic polymers, because the count, uh, the count of variable um, uh, exchange correlation functional of the density theory um, predicts something. So in, in, in the exact theory, uh, we know that for integer numbers, um, we, we, um, it will match the, the DFE number very well. But those fractional numbers, um, uh, fractional in electrons, um, the, the L, uh, DFT always predicts some lower uh, values than the, um, it will, it will, uh, it will be concave shape uh, as compared to the straight line of the real results. So what happened here is uh, whatever you put a charge into a system, the electron in the system, the electron is going to diffuse um, and give you some partial charge on each side. Therefore, everything you got to localize automatically. Therefore, um, you will study some localized states, uh, uh, wave functions, then um, give the name again, give it to you. So in terms of that, then um, it's very hard to predict something about self-localization. Self -localization. Therefore, it failed to predict the, um, the, the solid and pollen, the charged carriers of the, um, of the kinetic polymers. And people can also go beyond that, try to understand how, how the time-dependent correction can really uh, solve this problem. It turned out to be that if you do the time-dependent theory, ALDA, the adiabatic LDA approximation, but now it also doesn't, doesn't really reach the, the real results people are expecting. So both DAT and DTAT really fail quite seriously um, 
in terms of predicting, predicting the optical electrical properties of the um, of the domain polymers. So if DFE fails, Hashi Fock doesn't also doesn't pre, uh, doesn't pretty well, but it's too late, even two bonds, and therefore in, in a real um, in a real application, many people try to do uh, some uh, hybrid functionals, try to really um, mix them together and see whether we can do something in the middle. The mesh experiment data, but those mixing numbers are really important one. Nobody really know why, 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 why it's so, and um, it's very hard to do those uh, predictive designs. So our approach is to try to really normalize those very complicated electron correlation into like universal electron photon couplings. Therefore, use universal couplings, universal electron photon couplings, to um, to bypass the um, electron correlations. Therefore, can give us the very predictive results. To understand how it works, we can look at the um, graphing bank uh, structure first. So basically, graphing it also is the uh, a, a particle follow the, the shading equation. But it turns out to be that because of a certain uh, lattice uh, symmetry, it turns out to be that and then, um, you're going to form something called a Dirac point, a Dirac cone, and then the cone will touch it at Dirac point, and then those points the uh, the wave the energy spectrum will look like the um, uh, e times over phi equal to the um, the uh, the wave vector of the Fermi um, Fermi electrons and times the to the poly um, um, matrix. That to be the the, uh, the the grading of the um, of the wave, wave function, and um and and for kinetic polymers, kinetic polymers is nothing more than the graphing along one di one direction, cross the uh, Dirac points. If they cross each other, it's one dimensional. We can prove that um pulse actually prove that uh, we're going to have some pulse gap coming out, uh, coupled to the phonons and open open uh, a band gap, and this band gap is very similar to the um top topological insulator uh, band gap you will know about. Um, now they are really trying to looking, um, trying to see how how to design it out. Um, so it's also similar to the topology in which people are, are working on today. Anyway, so basically here uh, we can write another equation. Like we, we can write couple the, uh, the the left going and, and right going, uh, left going and right going uh, wave functions, and we really couple them together. And um, and if the delta here the the the, the, the boson field delta becomes zero, you you go back to the uh, original. Uh, or you know, get this um Dirac point, uh, Dirac point uh, picture for the graphing. And then the whole the whole Hamiltonian here can be described very well by something called a Schuster for Higgs Hamiltonian. Uh, effectively built upon the one one single parameter called lambda with about 0.2. So this the whole theory become very very beautiful. But this theory only works for for very simple cases about the uh, something called a polyacetylene. Only look at one single carbon chain, nothing else. And not working on anymore. That people stop working on because this system is not stable and uh, very very dangerous to handle in real experiment. So people start uh, stop doing that. Uh, start using these kind of systems for um, for about twenty years. And 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 now these people are using nickel materials, uh, very different materials to do the loss designs. And and our work is trying to really um, propose a way to really generalize this Hamiltonian to work for every single thing here. And because when I propose that, that if I, when I propose that um, say three years ago. Nobody believe I can do it. Like it's that crazy. How can you do that kind of things? <laughs> so um, so this happened in this country in general. Like if you force something, nobody know how to do it. Nobody talk, nobody will believe you. But today I'm going to show that you're kind of working now. <coughs> so um, so if you not believe me, I go back to my office and then work with my students and then we learn Hamiltonians. So uh, learn Hamiltonians, we have that some intra chain hopping terms talking about the um how the electron couple to the phonons. We, we write down those torsion and, and bending angles. We write down the hop type of terms between the different chains. So we write that out, and then we can develop. We, can, we, we go to literature and find out every single thing we can find out from literatures, uh, from experimental me measurements. We get two hundred, about 200, more than 200 points, independent data points. I put that as the axis here. On the axis, I, 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 I put down those uh, predicted values from our theory, from our Hamptonian, I show you uh, in, a, in, a, in the last slide, also some Hashi Fock, DFT, and TDFT uh, data. You can see that our data really fall into those, for those 200 points which you can find from literature, um, the deviation is about 0.2 EV as compared to such a huge uh, difference between Hashi Fock and TDFT and TDFT numbers. And that's all we need, um, um, and, and this our data we, we, we need to build our Hamiltonian, and then, um, and then they all share, these all share the fundamental universal content as we talked about uh, for the uh, original SH model. So not only um, for the, um, for the uh, optical band cap to not be uh, alive quite well with the experiment, at the same time, the whole spectrum actually alive also very well. Um, Band gap is really the peak of the absorption spectrum, the first peak of the smallest peak of the absorption spectrum. Not only that, the whole spectrum looks pretty well as well for those simple or classical, conventional or kinetic polymers, also those co-polymers, uh, which 
is one of our focus weight for those designs uh, for material design uh, applications. <coughs> and um, because it works so well, so we get confidence, we can we can start to do those, those predictions to um to, to see how how we can use our our our, our you know, to predict something which people not didn't know before. So um, for different kind of band gaps. So we colored uh, so um, so there are many many different kinds. We took about seventeen nine of the uh, of the most most people know about images and then do all combinations. So give out the thirty nine square of the uh, of the data points that right here. And and people normally think that if you have one A and B coupled together, for example, the band gap will be will determined by by the by the homo of one system also the um the, the, the whole state of one system also less on state of the other system. Therefore, in general, the band gap should be uh, should be like um, um negative one uh, line um, along along the whole the whole spectrum. But um, so this is what people expect in general if you allow any um any uh based on simple intuitions. But that's what we found. So um so we do integrations, we found out that nothing look like that. Really like um every color everywhere. So all the colors here are colored by real color of the op optical band gap. So red means red light, you're gonna observe red light, say blue or gonna observe the blue lights and uh, and then uh, ultraviolet, we color by the black to gray levels, and then also cyan levels, we, we color by the uh, infrared. So here are infrared, red region, green region, blue region, and, and some um, ultraviolet region as well. Look at maps, but actually this one is actually what I call the treasure map for those photovoltaic uh, solar cell design. So for example, whatever you need a color, say uh, given the red color, then I can pick out all red colors and tell you what you should use to do design. So, for example, if I pick up this red color, this is exactly the system people are using to produce uh, something um, which the, 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 the world record right now, um, the, um, about 12% of the efficiency for the, for the system. So, you need another, another color that can find out what it is and tell you how, how to make the materials, which may not, may not be there at all. Uh, so, this I call the search of map. So, we have this map, I can tell people, well, um, if you need a certain, certain thing, I can, I, can, I can tell you how to make it. And, um, and here also plot the, by the by having the, the room more fixed by one system and the home one system and tell you that how, how much you can evaluate uh, one by one for different systems. We can also try to make a, another, another useful um, information. In the sense that we can build those chemical structures, we can, tell, we can map how, how big the variation would be. We can tell you what, which one is give you the narrowest spectrum, which one give you the widest, which one give you the green light, which one give you the blue light. One by one, so this can be used for the loss material design purpose. <laughs> and not only so, we can also tell you that how how, how the um, uh, how the electron uh, electron um, hole, the exciton state actually got dissociates something called the, 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 the photon induced charge transport processes are uh, occurring occurring at the heterogeneous uh, hydro junction. Mm -hmm. So when we here, have some buckyball phase, also a connecting phase. Um, we have some some D one state and D one star state. The, the, the first h tone will going to occur at about 2.61 EV for our calculation, but then the h tone will absorb the light coming up. And this electron is going to deliver and do the charge transfer to the um to the to the to the buckyball state or the so-called T one U star state. And then everything will go undergoing the four electron one coupling. So this one is going to reduce and then move away from interface. The wave the wave function move away from interface. And then the buckyball phase is still stay, stay about the same place, there are no uh, no essential electron one couplings. The D1 state also it doesn't couple together to give another whole state, whole point states, but they also move away from the center. Because this one is so far away from the um the move away from the interface, follow away from the, the electron states, therefore the, the, the transition here are really forbidden. So therefore you can keep the, the, the electron in whole state that can dissociate and going out to do the um to do, to give the, the um the, the voltage for the for the electric applications. So you can compute the absorption spectrum before and after the absorptions. And do the difference of those, we get the something called the, the photo induced uh, absorption changes, which you plot here by the black curve, which match experimental one very well. Those are the um, local circles from experimental measurement. And not only so, the contribution also increased dramatically. We can really save all the materials of changes. Of, for example, for a very small system, we can need about 100 atom, for example, the difference is about 8 other materials. And in terms of all the um, in real time, like you, at BU, you get uh, five years, you need a uh, geological time um, <coughs> to, uh, to give you the PhD. So you can not hire a student to do that kind of things. So, um, so th this is the time saving. Uh, so uh, we also now we also can compare so quick, not so fast. We can also do the um, uh, uh, predict the, the morphology now. 
So we can we can we can we can we can do different kind of morphology, perfect uh, polymer phase, perfect uh, buckyball phase in the media emit states. We can do those um, looping uh, cube stuff and try to tell you that which one is low state and then rotate and then, and, then, and then mutate and then try to find out how to form those high clinical phase phase separation thing, which are really the fundamental thing for the uh, for the morphology design in, in, in terms of optimal uh, solar cell applications. Not only so, um, so we, um, from theory, we can also back up to tell you how solution actually moves. It moves in a very similar way as the as the caterpillar, for example. When caterpillar moves, we won't, we, we, not even can describe how each muscle actually moves and tell you the, how the whole thing actually, actually, actually migrate um, as a function of time. So uh, it actually evolves something called a ghost on mode, the G1 mode, and also the empty oscillation mode. What happened here is the ghost mode is a translational mode, which the caterpillar will go forward as a dislocating case, dislocating case. Also, at the same time, when it moves, the magnitude, how wide the, 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 whole, the, whole, the whole kink actually vary by time. So we found out that because different companies, by different companies, uh, some, some, some caterpillar, uh, when it comes up here, it becomes smaller size, and it goes down here, it becomes bigger size. The opposite case uh, is you climb here with your biggest, uh, bigger size, and then going down here by a smaller size, because it's uh, coming, different they all exist. In the intermediate gene, of course, uh, when you climb up and down, the material are about the same. So we can kind of describe in details about how to control this uh, uh, topological sort of, uh, motion um, in, in the system, similar to the uh, caterpillar or mean the dislocation motion in the, uh, in the, in the crystal interference. Use the, the same idea, uh, we can actually predict, we can actually use to design how those ions, which go to couple to the, to the left side of the, uh, of the of the, the, the metal oxides, the, what we call the small polon migration in, in, in the system. So this project was trying to understand how to design a, a sensor to, to, um, real, to be able to real-time sense um, the radiative high, um, high valence <coughs> electrons, uh, high, high valence are, are, are K ions. So in order to do that, normally we know the K ions are much easier to move if the charge are, if the size is small. For example, hydrogen is easy to move. Lithium also easy to move. That's why we use lithium as a battery um, uh, to carry the, uh, the charge for battery. But here, it involves very heavy ions like um, like um, C and three plus, very very big ions like uh, F uh, F metal materials. So we need something called silicon structures, and then we form polymer structure, and then we can we can we can we can use the idea of we show last last slide to tell you how the um, how the small polymer actually migrate uh, in the in the crystal uh, in the crystal or the solids. So uh, in, in 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 the in the crystal. Uh, Materials with the uh, with the the some lattice uh, defects, and also not only the um, what about the occur in the um, in the um, in the block in block waste, we can also study the, the surface phase. Uh, in experiments, uh, we have recently found out that the um, from STM with, and also X-ray experiment as well, we see some some new phase segregation occur at the um, at, at, at a given um, temperature and and, and and partial pressure of oxygen regime, and we can predict now. To see how exactly how the vacancies, uh, carbon dioxide, and surface area should play a role in terms of the, the phase the stability between those segregation phase, also the uh, perovskite phase, as we know about. So I want to see how, how we can predict it now from a theory how those lines should actually where are they, where they are, and so how to control them um, in the uh, in, from the continual point of view. <coughs> 